So we'll start out with a with an emotional video. So be prepared. Let's have it a little loud. Uh, Sometimes it feels like you are on the battlefield against an army of people who do not care. But if you will just turn around, you will see that behind you is also an army of people who do care. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that was our uh, last year's event. And uh, our talk today is about uh, this event and this year's event. And we want to show you what our priorities were in, in organizing these things. And one, is, uh, uh, one important point is to have a good team. And you see three of us here, but actually we're four. Andreas is unfortunately sick today, so he won't be able to join the IARC this year and we, we take his part. Um, just a short note, this is uh, Inga, uh, Caro, me and Andreas. Uh, at, at, during daytime, we have regular daytime jobs. Uh, when we wear our vegan hero capes at night, we're animal rights activists and we try to uh, do crazy stuff. Uh, we think it's important to have a vision, to, to, to have a goal. Uh, a clear goal that uh, we can. S oh, so ah, thank you, <laughs> very good. Uh, so uh, always have a have a goal that you can uh, adjust your actions to. And uh, for that, we have a quote that I'm going to read to you, uh, that we use in our press releases and on the website and in our posts on online and social media. And it's we are absolutely convinced that such large scale media effective demonstrations for animal rights have the power and the potential to significantly speed up the change in society and also change, of course, in politics and thus pave the way for a vegan future. So this is one of our main points. We think we can show that we are many already. There are millions of vegans alone in Germany, but all over the world, uh, even many millions, but we have to get them on the streets. So we would love to have it like this. This is German news. More than 200,000 participants, demonstration against speciesism in Berlin. Unfortunately, this is photoshopped. <laughs> yeah, so it, this was actually, it's, it's a real image. It was just photoshopped, the, the, the title. Uh, this was a, a demo against racism, 
which is a great turnout, more than 240 people, I think, in Berlin. Not nearly enough against racism. I think we should have millions of people going on the streets against racism. But that's, that's the, the vision we want. Uh, that's the vision we have to have this in the news all over the place. Um, yeah, next thing is the importance to get started. I don't know how many, well, mostly here in the audience, people are already active, otherwise probably they wouldn't be here uh, at the IARC, but at other occasions where we give this talk or we give talks, uh, some people are just recently became vegan, recently became active, or thinking about becoming active. And the most important step is to, to st get going, to, to do something. Like, of course, you have to think about what to do, but... Um, to, to, to get going is, is important. So in the, in the photo you see Caro and me, who got active uh, starting 2014. It's the first info booth uh, in Hamburg. I think we had like five conversations that day. Uh, well, it was a start, but uh, we soon had the idea, okay, we have to think bigger. What can we do? Such an info booth is nice, and we started having more conversations and more info booth. But we wanted to do something big, so that's where we started to think big. And we chose World Vegan Day, which is, of course, uh, November 1st. And we thought about a flash mob. Let's do a flash mob with signs, holding signs up, I'm vegan because. And everybody incognito have this sign, and then on a sign of a, of a um, whistle, everybody gets out their, their sign and shows, and everybody, all the people from Hamburg walk through these signs. So that was, uh, that was our idea. And I'm the number cruncher in the team, and I said, okay, well, let's see, five million people around, in and around Hamburg, 1% vegan in Germany, that makes 50,000 people. I was optimistic, I was uh, a brand new vegan, 50,000 people, let's say, okay, let's be modest, 1%. Let's get 1% of those 50,000 people on the street, that'd be 500 people on the street. Anybody want to take a guess how many people showed up? 100, good guess. Well, in our mind, it was like this. First year, 500, 1%, next year, 3,000, and within five years, we get those 50,000 on the street. I was very optimistic to do this. As it turned out, first year, 50, 0.1% of those vegans. But as you can see, the, the following years didn't really go, grow exponentially. So yeah, in peak year, we had 100 participants. Looked pretty nice, but we only got small local media attention. So that was not, we didn't make it to the big news in, on TV. So four of us sat down and said, okay, what are we gonna do in the fifth year for World Vegan Day? And we said, something has to change. We're, we're doing something wrong. And we said, okay, if, if Hamburg is not enough, then we have to think bigger. Let's think Germany and, of course, Austria and, and all the uh, other countries around Germany as well, if they want to come. But let's mobilize from Germany and beyond. And that's when we realized, before we were active in Albert Schweitzer Foundation, and then that's when we realized, okay, we have to give ourselves a new name, uh, even though that nobody knows, but we have to start out something new to be independent in our decisions, in our... Of, yeah, in everything to be independent, and that's how we founded the Tierrechtsaktivistenbündnis, the Animal, Activists, uh, Animal Rights Activists Alliance. And we also said something new has to happen. We have to think of something new, a new kind of active uh, or event or activism or demo uh, that, that pulls people uh, in a positive way to say, okay, that's something I want to participate in. And that's my transition to Caro. So, this, uh, this is how we got started. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And you already said it, uh, we wanted to think big, and um, that's also the title of this um, talk. So um, we thought um, we, we need to create something new. And um, first of all, to think big, this is also what we always uh, thought about, you have to try the impossible to achieve the possible. And that's something we, we definitely believe in. 
And um, for us, we said um, we want um, a new concept and we uh, thought of something else to do besides the flash mob because that didn't quite work out <laughs> well. So um, uh, you saw the video at the beginning. This is actually what happened then. We created the event which is called Hand in Hand für Tierrechte. Um, it's hand in hand for animal rights, basically, and um, it, it turned out to be a three-part uh, event, basically, with a human chain around the Alster, which you see over there on the right. It's the kind of a lake within the city center of Hamburg, and we thought it would be cool to do something new, something that would have probably not have been done before for animal rights, and we thought the human change would be a, a good thing to do. So, um, and when we organized that, we thought we also need kind of an info mile where all the organi organizations could be there and um, show what they do, what they offer, and uh, talk to people because there's uh, thousands of people uh, on a Saturday in Hamburg City. So uh, that was one part of, um, of the... Um, of the event, and then also we wanted to end this with a demo march around the, uh, the city. And um, yeah, it actually kind of uh, turned out pretty well because uh, we were 3,000 plus participants and at the end, what you saw in the video. So um, yeah, that uh, was uh, great. And we uh, kind of realized that it's, it's good if we um, try to mobilize um, other people, just not in Hamburg, just um, uh, nationwide and also from Austria and Switzerland. And yeah, the um, next thing, of course, we kind of enjoyed that and we thought that's great, but let's do something else as well. And um, the next idea originally wanted to, um, when we thought about doing something big for World Vegan uh, Day, we wanted to organize the uh, Animal Rights March in, in Hamburg. Uh, that didn't work out that day, so we created Hand in Hand. And um, then we decided to do the official Animal Rights March uh, 2019 in Berlin, which um, happened this year then. And um, this also um, turned out really well. It was just said at our introduction. It happened uh, two weeks ago in Berlin, and this time we uh, managed to get 5,600 people on the street. So, um, also, which is, uh, it was kind of the second largest uh, animal rights march this year, right after London. So, a pretty good turnout, and we're we're really happy about that. So, and uh, we have something nice for you, actually. Uh, we wanted to show you the um, official video of the Animal Rights March. It was just uh, released an hour ago on Facebook. <laughs> and uh, this is kind of the, the first uh, sneak pre uh, preview that you get here right now. Um, yeah. Eine Woche kam er zu mir und meinte, Papa, ich will kein Fleisch mehr essen. Ich habe ihn gefragt, wer, warum und er hat mir erzählt von äh, irgendeiner Geschichte in der Schule und haben wir entschieden, ja, dann machen wir das nicht mehr als Familie.
Yes, thank you very much. We're really excited about this um, numbers, and we, of course, we hope it's uh, it's growing. And um, yeah, we wanted to uh, talk a little bit about what uh, is what, what what changed actually, and we um, that's what we are going to go into deeper now about working, how we work, and how we do this, and how we make this happen. And um, one thing is that we are, um, yeah, kind of concentrating on um, on doing this on a very professional basis. We um, see this, what we organize more as an event than like a, a kind of an activism happening that is just for a couple of hours and then everyone goes away at home. We uh, think of it as a whole package and uh, all of us, uh, we're very different, the four of us, but we um, all have a, a business background and we try to approach it this way and we try to, to um, implement our talents that we have like uh, organizational leadership management. Um, qualities and that we bring into this event and um, we're still no organization we're still just like four people who organize this and uh, for hand in hand we were actually six plus the designer and um, but we still like we're very committed and we um, try to think very um, yeah goal oriented and uh, make strategic decisions um, for example, when we organized the Animal Rights March in Berlin, of course, uh, the three of us are from Hamburg, Andreas is from Stuttgart, and we thought well, we should do this, and we decided to do it in Berlin, because um, it's a bit inconvenient for us to do it in a city where we're not at home, but we thought it, it's the best decision for um, the thing, for the movement, for the march, because it is um, the the largest um, kind of vegan capital in Germany, and it was uh, parallel to the summer festival that we had in um, in Berlin that weekend. So we knew there were a lot of people around already, and um, that made us um, make that decision. Um, also, whenever we think of something, we uh, like we need to decide. We always think about what's best for the cause and not what's our personal preference. Um, Yes, also, um, we try to be very transparent. Um, we have uh, values and um, disclaimer that we use, and we um, want to, uh, that everyone is aware of why we take decisions, why we do certain things certain ways. Uh, we use social media. Inga is going to talk about that later a little bit, uh, a lot to um, kind of um, tell people why we think certain ways, why we uh, make certain decisions, and um, we... Uh, uh, have a transparency post that we had after hand in hand where we um, kind of openly posted every single penny that was donated to us where it went so what we spend it on and so we want to be really clear about what we do and why we do it um, also reflection is a very important thing for us we think it's really important to be self-reflective to always question what we do if it's the right thing to do and um, we discuss everything in the group like everything <laughs> Marcus will show you some uh, slides later on on that as well uh, because we think um, it's important to have all four opinions and always come to a good agreement before we um, take decisions and before we communicate anything um, feedback is very important to us as well. We always take it super seriously if other groups or other people approach us, ask us about certain things. We always um, try to um, be very open-minded and considerate and also it happens that we change our way we think about certain things. Um, yeah, we're always open to new topics as well, and we'll try to, to stick with the movement, and we also try to um, see what's going on around us and, and do uh, smart make smart decisions as well in regards to that. Um, yeah, so we, we keep on learning and we stay open-minded. Uh, also, it's very important to build kind of a resilience. Um, you, need, you know that in this movement, there's also issues with uh, people always, not everyone likes what you do. People try um, to um, convince you to do things differently. And for us, it was really important to uh, understand that what we do, that the way we do it, that we decided um, on that and that we want to stick to that and um, that we have a good way of doing things in our point of view. And um, yeah, and also if something doesn't work out, we are not shy to, to admit that and to change our way. Um, also, we had uh, a post which is um, uh, Clare Kante, how we called it. It's um, our values and our positioning very clear. 
and we said we clearly distance ourselves not only from speciesism, uh, but from all racism, sexism, anti-Semitism, homophobia, and any other form of discrimination are non-partisan and independent. And we also stand for openness, tolerance, a peaceful coexistence, and speak out expressly, expressly for animal rights, the preservation of nature, as well as the vegan way of life as expression and the necessity of a civilized society. This is our baseline, and this is something that is not negotiable for us. And um, everything within those lines, we try to be very inclusive and uh, very open-minded. Um, that's another topic we really, um, yeah, um, which is very important to us: inclusion. And uh, we try to do uh, to include other. Um, Languages for the RM, I don't know if you saw it on the leaflet before, we had five languages on the, on the leaflet uh, to make people aware of what's happening, when it's happening. We had t-shirts um, that are in five languages um, and we um, had a mobilization video with sign language and also had a sign language translator on site for the, for the event, for the march. Um, yeah, I think that's, um, that's it. Um, one more thing is maybe uh, our motto is uh, hand in hand, like we, uh, we call the first um, event, what's hand in hand for Tierrechte for Animal Rights. And uh, but that is also what we're trying to live. So we're trying to unite organizations to work with everyone together. We don't, we, it's just our really our wish that we can kind of unite the movement and hope that everyone will, will be uh, on the same page with us so we can get a lot of people on the street and, um, and unite, basically, for the, for the thing, for the issue. Thank you. Inga? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I'm always very excited uh, to be on stage and talk about our work, so bear with me if I'm starting to stutter or anything. So... Um, yeah, the importance of a brand. Um, we created a brand accidentally, actually. We, uh, because we have such a professional approach, um, we, we had a designer uh, doing all the um, logo work for us. He's actually here. Stefan is sitting in the first row. Thank you, Stefan, for everything. But, so. Yeah, and what, what you can see here, actually, I'm not having my notes here, uh, so I'm very sorry for that. But what you can see is here, I'm, um, let's slide in a few of our posts. This is uh, our designs, and uh, our posts are going with those designs. They are very colorful and cheerful, and the fonts are also very nice, and it's, it's rather happy and not dark. So, um, oh, sorry, I, I have a blackout. <laughs> uh, wait, hold on a second. I'm very sorry. I'm not. I'm not used to do this. So, uh, so okay. Here are my notes. <laughs> ah, yeah. Okay. So we are not only online, but also all all stationery. Like our uh, briefpapier is um, is branded with our logo and our and our colors. So by doing so, and um, by, do, by creating a recognition factor, we uh, hope to uh, build, or we hope to brand um, a brand on the go. And with this brand, uh, we are creating supporter loyalty and um, identification. Our post pictures uh, are always a posit is positive campaigning and positive texts. We um, we would also recommend to use. Uh, to, to use tools like Canva, if you don't have a designer at hand, like we, um, that you use tools like Canva or uh, Photoscape to create, to create a nice appearance for your um, events. So now I have to multitask. So, <laughs> so okay, as you can see, these are our, uh, our designs for a few posts. And um, what we realized and uh, what the feedback was for us is that uh, people or the, the vegan community, especially newly vegans, really liked, liked our appearance because it is not um, as dark as many other uh, organizations post stuff. They can identify with it because it uh, seems to be happy, but uh, still on point. Our texts are always on point, but uh, the designs are happy. So click, 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 click. 
So we have a, um, a very straight social media strategy, um, I would say, because we really uh, plan when we post and what we post and where we post it. We use the Facebook analysis tools for that and Instagram analysis tools. So this is why we never post at the weekend most of the time. We always post around 4.30 during the week or later at night at 9 o'clock because um, our audience, our followers, are not online weekends. Um, they are online when they have uh, firearmed and drive home, then they have a look on their mobile phone and go to Facebook and see our posts. If we would post in the morning or uh, on a Saturday morning, um, the recognition of our post and the, um, the reach would be different. So we, we would really recommend that uh, everyone who's publishing on Facebook is using those tools to see when to post to reach most of the people. So there I have a question. Um, who of you um, is organizing animal rights events. Great. And how many of you um, do publish on Facebook? And how many of you were frustrated because not as many people uh, attended as you wished? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, uh, we had the same, but uh, actually on, on our first uh, event, Handel für Tierrechte, we were very, very lucky that already 3,000 people attended. Yeah. We were so happy, really, I can't imagine. Um, so we have a strategy for every platform. You see the logo of uh, Facebook there and Instagram. Uh, we are on Twitter just uh, for a month now or something. We have a YouTube channel and uh, we use Facebook, for example, for uh, all informational posts, especially, especially in the event. We post lots of information about the event and on our Facebook, post, uh, Facebook page we uh, add other information that might interest other people. And on Instagram we are posting uh, more um, daily stuff, like uh, we streamed that we are here, we posted stories, uh, like our little road trip, how we got here, and it's a little bit more easygoing than the strict Facebook uh, posts, where we always have a disclaimer. This is the one that uh, Caro was just reading. And uh, um, yeah, this is how we do it with the social media platforms. But uh, social media is online, and online is not everything. And the most people who are following us online are already vegans, or newly vegans, or animal rights activists. So you really have to, or we really did have a look at the offline world as well, because everything we do, this whole work, and when I see those videos, it's so emotional to see how this work of so many months um, manifest in this event. It's, it's so great, but this is not what we, we are not doing it for the vegans. We are not doing events by vegans for vegans. We are creating events for not yet vegans. We hope that... Um, our events are so large and so interesting that the mass media is coming and is um, reporting about it. That, uh, like Hand in Tierrechte, actually the DPA, uh, Deutsche Presseagentur, called us and said, hey, uh, is it right that you are doing an event at the Hamburger Binnenalster? And I was on the phone like, ah, yeah. And they asked me a few questions and then this article pu published through all uh, main German newspapers, which was amazing. So this is the goal. We want that all not yet vegans, I, we call them not yet vegans because we believe everyone will be vegan someday, um, that all the not yet vegans are sitting at home on their couch watching, newspaper, watching television, watching the news, and they see a demonstration about animal rights, that they see in the newspaper an article about animal rights and veganism, that they are listening to the radio and it's, there's a talk about animal rights. So this is why we are not only using social media, but also uh, very different other tools for online and offline. Like um, city websites. I guess every city has a website, like for us it's Hamburg.de and Hand in Hand für Tierrechte, we published also there. Not because we believe that everyone who sees this um, event turns vegan immediately and attends the event, but we believe that um, the more often animal rights are on the normal uh, news and television and uh, newspapers, that, that uh, the more people are going to think about it and uh, see this topic as relevant. So we could really, uh, I could really uh, go into detail uh, to, uh, with all of these logos. Uh, on, the, on the left side you see everything who, who um, supported us offline with banners, flyers and stickers and stuff like that. 
And on the right side, you see Presse Portal, which is a professional press release agency, which we used for the official Animal Rights March this year. And you see newsletter to go and Eventbrite as event platform to spread the event and the news as far as possible. Yeah, sorry for my blackout, but I hope you still got some information. <laughs> Yeah, another point uh, is the importance of networking, and that's why we're all here, I assume. So uh, please take the opportunity here. If it, this is who, who's the first time here? Who's the first IAC? Wow! Last year that question was asked, and I saw as many uh, hands as now. So something is wrong if people do not return. We have to stay in the movement, stay here, and come next year. Bring in more people. We need to to grow. So use this opportunity to network. We believe that networking was one key element of our success of the two, two uh, animal rights events because uh, we have been active for several years and we have been networking for several years. If we had started out at, as unknown Tierrechtsaktivistenbündnis and wrote emails to info at proveg.org, let's say, then nobody would have replied. Uh, because we're unknown, they get hundreds of emails per day so uh, there's no chance. So what really saved us is our networking work. It's work networking. Yeah, it's also work uh, because you have to get out there, you have to start the conversation, you have to find a topic to talk about. Um, but that really saved us because uh, we were already in touch with so many people. We knew someone personally at some organization here and some organization there, and we were able to ask them for their support. Could you please... Uh, share our event? Can you include it in your newsletter? Can you post about it? Can you share our posts? Can you tell your activists from, from your organization to participate? Can you help us out with uh, technical stuff? Can you uh, help us out with financial problems? Can you uh, help us with uh, missing volunteers? We need some volunteers. So networking is really essential. Um, we, as Tierrechtsaktivistenbündnis, we try to participate in other events and other movements events. So, uh, obviously, vegan events, of course, we try to go there. We try to be present, just as we are here now, uh, to, to get the networking going. But we also support, for example, Fridays for Future. We've been to Fridays for Future, and we had a talk there on the connection of veganism and uh, uh, extinction or a climate catastrophe. We went to the Christopher Street Day in Hamburg and supported them uh, for the issues. Uh, we are here at the IARC. So I think this is a good, good uh, opportunity not only to network. Thank you. Uh, so not only network, but show support. Go there and show that you support their cause and also for visibility, as I said. Uh, yeah, here you can see from Hand in Hand, this is a screenshot from the Hand in Hand video. Uh, we had the info booth uh, on, the, on the main street, main shopping street in downtown Hamburg, and we had 20 animal rights organizations have an info booth right in the middle of Hamburg. And that was, that was the, the result of years of networking that we, had, that we got this support. Um, the importance of communication, yeah, uh, Kawa already said it. Um, we, communication is uh, as, much, as important as networking, I think. Uh, we have so many communication channels, I can't even count them. For example, we sent out leaflets and, and posters to about 100 cities all over Germany, in the 100 biggest cities in Germany, all above 100,000 inhabitants. And we created a chat, a Facebook chat, with each of the, uh, of the helpers in that city who were going to distribute the leaflets. So that alone was 100 different chats with people from those cities. We had chats with the media team that we created, that we had uh, for the photographers and the, and, the, and the filmers. We had chats with the musical acts which were going to play at the Animal Rights March. We had... Uh, a, a, um, Trello, which is an organization tool where we discussed everything in detail, and we had an internal WhatsApp chat. I think most of you know WhatsApp, and we, have, just as a fun fact, we did uh, we ran an, uh, an analysis on those on that chat, 
And I just want to point out a few figures. So that chat was created 291 days ago. That was last November. That's when we started to organize the Animal Rights March, which was only two weeks ago. There were 13,160 messages sent by four people, out of which 805 were voice messages because we didn't have time to type. We had too much to say. That averages to 45 messages a day. And that's only one communication channel of the four of us. So that's why we also, we, uh, Caroline has uh, talked about working professionally. That shows that we discuss things at length before we come to a conclusion. Oh, next is also me. Importance of funding on donations. Um, obviously, if you organize something that big, you need to get some money. When we first set up a, a GoFundMe, uh, where people could donate, uh, and we had a, a donation goal of, I think it was 1,000 euro, I don't know, if, maybe a couple of thousand euro, and somebody commented, what do you need that money for? You go to the police, you tell them the route you want to walk, you do some Facebook posts, and people come. Well, that's not going to work. That's, that really is something that we can say it's not going to work. Uh, you need to put some effort in, uh, in marketing of the event. And we spent about... Yeah, a euro fifty per participant. So in total, about eight eight and a half thousand euro, uh, and that had to come from somewhere. That money. Um, one big donor is Lush Cosmetics. So there's a, sh a small shout out to Lush here. They made the uh, the Animal Rights March possible. The charity pot. They give it 100 percent to charities. That really helped us out a lot, but it was not enough. So we set up PayPal, GoFundMe, uh, wire transfer. People could go give cash at the event, so and, and we set up a spreadsheet shop where you can buy animal rights merch, and that really, in total, uh, got us all the money we needed to get the, the event as big as, as possible. Um, yeah. So, at, this is the point where we uh, set up a Patreon just a few days ago, or I don't know, maybe today? <laughs> Finalized today. Uh, because the only thing that's holding us from getting those 240,000 people on the street is our day jobs. <laughs> so we would love to cut down on the, on the day jobs and do more activism. So if you like what you saw or if you participated and loved being there and want to see more of that, there's a way to support us. That's when I switch over to Caro. Yeah, and um, I just want to uh, have a few words about images because um, what we do, um, uh, Marcus just talked about funding and it seems like a lot of money for just a day and a, a few hours of action. But actually what's our goal as well and what we always keep in mind is um, the images we create with it. And um, that, so that is actually what we think is really important that you have in mind what uh, you can create with an event like this, uh, which... Is, <laughs> which is long lasting and uh, we have um, the um, we think it's a it's a really powerful tool and if you use it wisely uh, it brings a, a big value for um, for your event and for um, everything you did and we um, just want to give a few tips or, or say what we did because we um, gave a lot of thought to this and we uh, realized after the first event that um, it's it's really it makes a lot of sense to um, have a good team, to have a good media team. So what Marco said, we had a, a whole team of, I think, seven people who just did photography and videography for us and we advised them. So if you um, have people, tell them what you uh, want them to do, tell them what you want them to, to picture. Um, we had, for example, at the RM in Berlin, we had one person up on top of the TV tower to take pictures from there. Um, we asked them to take group pictures, single pictures. Um, we knew we would uh, we wanted a video at the end because that's uh, what gets also the most 
attention on social media um, later on and you can watch this years and years later and it's actually something that is really motivating to people. We ourselves, like me personally also, always get a lot of motivation out of videos that I see from other people uniting and going, um, you know, that makes me uh, keep on going. So we think that is a, a really powerful tool that we should all uh, use wisely and um, be sure to um, make a really good plan and um, yeah, communicate specifically with uh, what you need and what you want and uh, plan your uh, post-production also already before the event. And um, also we um, have the same thing with the volunteers. That's also very important. We just talked about the four of us, but actually, of course, there were a lot of uh, a lot more people that made this uh, possible. We had lots of great volunteers at the uh, at both events. And uh, what's really important there also. Um, what Marco said, the network. If you have people around you that you can rely on, you know that they're going to be there for you, uh, make sure you ask them in time if they can help. Also, uh, we communicated, uh, communicated very openly uh, on Facebook um, month before that we need volunteers and if people want to commit that we would love them to um, to join a community group so we created a community um, page on Facebook or a group where people could join and get all the information um, we also um, call people uh, if you if you plan an event and you do, don't have enough volunteers call people you know you want to be have there because that makes a big difference if you just send out mass messages it doesn't really work so if you call them send them a direct message it helps a lot um, also here as well clear communication is is really important um, we had a guideline of like for the animal rights march uh, with a 10 page I think <laughs> guideline for help us and because um, we wrote down what we expect um, them to do what we want them to do what we um, hope they would do so um, and that helped everyone actually to have a good understanding of uh, what is going to happen. Um, also, um, start communicating early and um, use uh, use your chats and do personal briefings as well. well. If you're in the city, like in Hamburg, we did a briefing uh, a week before for helpers. That way, you also you know make them feel good. You have they have the feeling they're engaged. They know what's going on. And also, very important, the day of the event, uh, you know, plan enough time for really good briefings so they they know what's going on and what is expected of them. And um, also ask for their feedback, very important as well, um, and listen to their suggestions because those people um, are always um, experts or they attended a lot of other events and they might know more than you think. So, And they also feel very appreciated if you um, ask them later what they thought, if they have any um, recommendations, how we could do it better. And that's always a, a good way of communication as well. And never forget to think, of course, thank the people that help you out. Yeah, so when everything is done, the event is, uh, is over, all the work manifested in this event, all pictures are taken, then it's not over. <laughs> then uh, you are going home and then you have to do all the after work, which is in our case uh, creating a survey. Or if we are good, then we did it before the event and just have to publish. Um, and this is what we do after each event. After Hand in Hand für Tierrechte, we did it and also now after the official animal rights march. We use SurveyMonkey for that and asking uh, all participants how they liked the event and if they have suggestions uh, to make it even better. Here you can see uh, three questions we asked, just like uh, how they found out. This is a very important question for us because we wanted to know, like at Hand in Hand für Tierrechte and now at the second event, if all the print material that we are paying and sending all over Germany, if it pays out. And as you can see, uh, most of the people are finding us on Facebook. Then it's uh, their friends who are telling them about the event and then it's already flyers and posters. So, um, and then the other question here, if uh, the people would have found us without print material, clearly answer is yes. Of course, there are not the people in this uh, survey who are found us through print material and are not online and do not receive the link for the survey. <laughs> 
but um, it's, a, it's a good uh, picture to get how many people already uh, found us through the flyers or the leaflets and then went online to see more information. And here's another question about the demo signs. I'm, uh, I guess you saw them in the video, the um, Turkey's uh, Turkos uh, um, Schilder. Yeah, signs, <laughs> the Turkish uh, signs with the animal rights uh, now and Tierrechte jetzt, compassion for all um, claims on it. And uh, this was new at this event that we created them and um, gave them uh, to the people for uh, 10, uh, 10 euros. Um, Deposit, thank you, for 10 euros deposit, and uh, to hold them up during the march. And afterwards we wanted to know, was it a good idea or not? Should have we printed more or should we print more? And what's, uh, what's the deal with that? So this uh, question really helped us to give us an answer. How many people uh, liked, the, liked the signs, borrowed a sign, wanted to have a sign but didn't get one, and so on. So we would recommend to uh, do such a survey every time. Um, to find out what you, what you can improve so that next time more people come. And it's also building a community because you include the people into uh, your decisions and uh, that feels good for most of us. Ah, <laughs> the power of our next event. Hand in hand for Tierrechte, you saw the video. We are doing it again. <laughs> Next year in Hamburg, May 2nd, we're trying to get there two lakes in Hamburg, a smaller one and a bigger one. For the smaller one, we needed 1,500 people and we were 3,000. For the bigger lake, we would need around 8,000 people, right? So we strive, we strive for 8,000 people. You can find all information on social media, of course, and on our website. Yeah, just said it, 2nd of May. Will be the same event, uh, Human Chain, Info Booth, and uh, Demo Through City. Go for it. <laughs> Come to Hamburg. Hamburg is a beautiful city. Uh, you know, social media? Do you want to do a social media übung exercise with me? <laughs> so if so, and you're on social media, on Facebook, then it would be great if you would take your mobile phone out. Mm -hmm. And then you go on Facebook. Then you type in, hand in hand, für Tierrechte. Then you should find an event which is called Hand in Hand für Tierrechte 2.0. Click on that. And click going. <laughs> and share. Yeah, Tony, good recommendation. If you, can't, if you can't attend or if you're attending or doesn't matter what, please share the event that uh, most of your friends are getting to know this event and um, will come as well. Yeah, we're, we're, we're past, past the end. So uh, we're approaching the end. We're all, almost over the time, but uh, this is uh, perfect because we only have three slides left. So there's not a good talk without a good mo motivational quote. So actually, that's also a good photo. Um, but we have a good uh, quote that kept us going in the early beginning. And that's by Margaret Mead. It's an American cultural anthropologist. And she said, Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. So believe in your power. Believe that you can change the world if you only have a vision and a goal and, and follow it. So the final slide is the importance of being grateful. Thank you. Thank you.